Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our talk today. It's me and Sarah. We're going to talk about two sides of the platform development coin, ads and New York Times. My name is Ahmed Bebars. I'm a principal engineer at the New York Times. And I'm really focused on developer platforms and how we deliver our tooling to our product engineering teams. And I'm Sarah Duncan, a staff engineer at the New York Times. And I focus on content personalization and connecting our products to our machine learning platform in efficient and flexible ways. At the New York Times, our mission is simple. We seek the truth and help people understand the world. And we're doing that by aiming to build the essential subscription bundle for every English speaking curious person who seeks to understand and engage with the world. Our most recognizable product is news, um, but we have other products like games, cooking, wire cutter, audio, and the athletic. As our product portfolio has grown and our technology has developed, so has our tech organization. As we rapidly grew, we found ourselves making a lot of localized decisions, which has a lot of pros, has a lot of cons, and we started experiencing a lot of the cons. This prompted us to realize that we might need more internal developer support. And so we started talking about what that might look like. In the before times, um, when we were making these localized decisions, uh, there were a lot of trade-offs in making all of those different API decisions specifically. The benefits were it could be really quick. Developers understood and knew how their systems worked, at least to some extent and solutions were tailored to initial goals of each project. But with each bespoke solution, we also saw that it could slow us down because we were reinventing the wheel every time. We got stuck in debates about what technology might serve the best purpose. Um, we had a lot of knowledge silos, which made it harder for engineers to onboard. It was also dangerous during incident troubleshooting. And it was also difficult when thinking about QA and N10 testing to get things actually connected properly. We identified that we were a bit too far on the side of localized development with not enough centralized best practices incorporated into our work, and we wanted to improve this. This is just maybe even 10% of the different uh, technologies that we were using. You can see that platform teams and product teams were really kind of living in different worlds. There was a little bit of overlap. We were all on GitHub. <laughs> but other than that, every team was kind of making their own decision, and that led to a lot of different permutations. With those different variations, uh, we saw some of our biggest pain points were around programming languages, uh, tracing, especially thinking about end-to-end -end tracing, the different configurations that we had in different log and trace destinations meant that we had a really hard time putting together end-to-end -end traces. Our cloud tooling was all over the place. Um, we we're on two different clouds, on multiple products within those clouds. And when it, even when it came to CI, CD, we were using different deployment methods, um, different kinds of plugins. Some people were using Terraform, some people were using custom bash scripts. And it really created so many different permutations of how a system was being built and deployed and iterated on that it was almost impossible to find a subject matter expert who could help with that end to end. And that created a lot of uh, tension between the client product engineers and the supporting platform engineers because nobody was really getting what they wanted out of this relationship. So we decided that these were some of the things we really needed to focus on as some of the biggest pain points, as some of also the biggest uh, cloud cost uh, issues when thinking about the CICD deployments, the cloud tooling. Um, we decided that these were really the areas that we needed to focus on in order to create a consistent, reliable workflow that could bridge these two kinds of teams. And that's where I'll pass it over to my colleague Ahmed, who took some of those ideas and put them into action. So let me walk you through how are we designing like our platforms to ship all of these features. So first we have to think about like what the platform team own and what the product teams own and what they need. And this is very important from a perspective, like how we are building a platform as product here. So platform teams focus on governance. They want to make sure that everybody for production and it follows the best practices, as Sarah mentioned. Also like they scale, scale out of the box. Like product teams don't have to think about like how these resources scale, like how's their deployment scale, how's their infrastructure scale. But one of the other thing is like, when you are like running with a lot of infrastructures, there's a lot of optimizations that you can do out of the box. So product teams don't have to think about that. So what they have to think about is like, more how we can move fast, like how we can make a decisions about our business logic and application and focus more on our feature delivery and to bring all of the business needs, problems, solve it all 
with a platform that can support them to do that. And to do that, when like we are building a platform, we have to focus on like what exactly we are looking for. Like what are our platform pillars that we are focused on? And like, let's start by like standardization. One problem that Sarah mentioned earlier, debates about which tool, what is the programming language we use, like all of that design pattern, like best practices, all of the kind of stuff. We want to standardize this out of the box. So it's not just like reduce the time to start developing, but also makes the entire ecosystem as a company similar to each other. So that like any engineer at any team can help with like understanding and understand the entire flow of an application and software development lifecycle. But again, like when we are centralized, we can have more efficiency about been backing maybe some buds on nodes, maybe understanding like how all of the resources work together, have some best practices for how you manage your database that improves the value. So like product team can focus on delivering business value while platform team can focus on all of these optimization. Integration here is an interesting part because like the word of integration is more about the tooling and how all of the integrations should come apart and be flexible. Scalability, that's one of the things that I talked about earlier. Visibility is another thing because like as the system grow, we need to have full visibility, but also cost element into it that helps team understand like their decision and their factors. We want to give them the tools, but they still want to make decisions, the best decisions for their applications because they are the subject matter expert here. When we go from that, like we already have our pillars. So now how we build that into workflow. So we came up with that workflow idea about like, we have different ways of like defining what step you are into the process. And we start by the create, develop, build, test, and deploy, run, route, monitor. All of these are workflows that have its own tools. And from that, we would use the time for like bringing a service from weeks to a few minutes because like the entire process right now, it's easier. You don't have to think about runtime. You don't have to think about your pipelines. CI, CD, all of the kind of stuff, it's built for you. And it's more important that we have observability all over from like the first step to the last step so we can deliver value to our customer. And that's how we are trying to focus on like giving the product teams the values that they need to continue and iterate to deliver the products in our portfolios that we have. So let's talk about the building board. So now we talked about the ideation and why are we doing this? And we talked about the design. But like, let's go through the building and take it one further step. So one thing is like when you start developing workflows and we start design something, it becomes from like a design to a reality at some point, because one of the problem is just like you come into like few edge cases and how you solve for that. And this is a very important aspect when you develop a platform. You have to think about the platform can cover every single use case. So how are we going to have more flexibility and like how we would be able to have a flexible architecture to a build for like 80, but then have a 20 that they can help us build for on their own needs and their own features and their own stuff. And from that, we have a, to bring a holistic view into the platform. So the way that we see it is like, there are like multiple spaces that we have to focus on. So the first space that we focus on is developer. Our engineers are important to have like more than single interface to help them with developing their application. It starts from an IDE. Talking about interfaces like API, UI, CLI, all of these are helpful in a way. Either you integrate it from your CI or like you use a UI to see like how is your application is performing or you like use a CLI because that's how as an engineer, I love a CLI and another engineer would love a CLI. And then like we go into the platform space, that's more of like CI, CD, all of the processes, all of the scaling, monitoring, security. And the, the last layer is the infrastructure space. And in that space, we're like, we handle most of the automation. So teams don't have to think about like all of that pieces from scaling and all of the kind of stuff that it has to work for them. So let me walk you through quickly into how like a service getting created. Basically a product team go to the portal, request a new application, application is getting created. What's created mean here, a repo gets created, blueprints gets created, like all of the resources, everything out of the way gets created. Then once this has happened, it's just like, the entire full set of features are being shipped already. 
they have a Kubernetes deployment, they have their Argo pipeline, they have their ECR, they have everything. So in a few minutes, they can really start ship code and start like deploy something into production if it's needed. And if it's ready for like the next step for like how they want to bring the business logic to life. So you don't have to think about like all of that. It doesn't mean that it's fully ready to production. There are a lot, a lot of steps and best practices that we have to do here, but at least like the first iteration is quick and they can like start develop from that step. And from there, I'll hand it off back to Sarah. So now I explain the platform. She will tell us more about how they are building on top of the platform. Thanks, Ahmed. With this amazing platform in place, my team last year needed to build a new GraphQL API. And so we used this platform. And as Ahmed mentioned, we were able to easily spin up a lot of the scaffolding here with CICD configurations in place, secret management in place, configuration files for one of our standard languages. And we were able to create all of this within our existing mono repo. When we were ready to deploy it, we really didn't have to do too much. Uh, the hosting was already set up on this Kubernetes platform without any extra steps on our side. We had a multi-region deployment complete with auth, routing URLs, this whole network layer, and we didn't have to really dig too much into how that was configured. We were just able to deploy. There was also automatically auto scaling in place, which really has been incredible for us because when we started this API last year, we were initially serving about 500 requests per second. In the time since then, our platform, our, our API has changed a lot. The capabilities that we're serving have increased. And so with this auto scaling in place, we're now serving 2,800 RPS and we didn't have to change anything. Uh, it just auto scales and we didn't have to lift a finger, <laughs> which has been pretty incredible for my team. As we get into then this kind of iteration, there have been a lot of different ways that we've been iterating on our API and iterating on the platform in partnership with Ahmed and the other platform engineers. One thing that we get out of the box is hosted preview environments and development environments, and that allows us to iterate and test really quickly. We do a lot of experimentation with content personalization, and one of the ways that this really helps us is that we're able to QA and really test out our capabilities in a pre-production environment before bringing things to production. I'll pass it back over to Ahmed. And that's, thank you, Sarah, because that's a great segue into feedback is a feature into your platform. Like we have to focus on understanding like how we are not building a project. We are building something that like will stay there for years. We will develop V1, V2, V3, like all of the features necessary for teams to evolve and also because technology evolved. So you have to keep in mind that we have to focus on customer feedback because we are not building a platform just to be a shiny tool. We are building something to enable product teams into that. And from that, what are the takeaways for our presentation? Uh, what are the takeaways for our talk and for the last few years of developing a platform? Use documentation critical. It's something that you have to focus on because like you don't want to always like try to answer questions. You have to mature your documentation more and more because how your platform grows, how your like user base grow, like you don't want to like get churned into like documentation and answering questions when like you can document in a better way. Adoption and partnership, it's crucial because like as Sarah mentioned, like we want to have this adoption and partnership space where like we know what we're building and we test it really quickly we want to have like a close tight feedback loop where we ship this does it does it work like no it's not working let's like fix it and do all of the kind of stuff and again platform as a product it's a mindset you have to adapt it it's not a project it's a product that will go a long way with how you develop a platform customer feedbacks surveys and all of the kind of stuff where to improve what works and what doesn't work Sure, nice feedback about what we built is great, but also critical feedback is important. Like we need to understand where we fail short and how to improve on that. Thank you everyone for listening. And if you are coming to uh, Platform Con Live Day in New York, would love to see you there. Me and Sarah will present a longer version of that. So looking forward to see everyone and thank you for listening to our talk.